Hi, this is Lindsay at PassionateHomemaking.com, and I'm here today to give you a real-life view of my kitchen pantry, what staples I keep in my kitchen. And so I wanted to give you just a fun little glimpse, like reality, what it looks like in my kitchen, what I find are the most practical foods to keep on hand for uh, maintaining a real food kitchen pursuing those things that are most natural and healthy for your family. So anyway, um, I'm just going to take you on a quick little tour. Not, ex not extravagant um, by any means, and I'm going to share with you what I use on a very frequent basis. Um, I, I keep a minimum as much as possible. I don't want a lot of random things, grains, sweeteners in my kitchen. I just try to keep to the most practical, basic ones that will um, satisfy our needs and cover all of our bases. So, um, come with me through another little tour of my kitchen. So this is my first set of storage unit, and I like to use grains to display. I think it's fun. Um, brings fun color to your kitchen, and they're easily accessible. These are the, my two shelves above my kitchen sink. And um, some of the grains I, I keep up here, um, millet, brown rice, and kamut grain. And I like to use millet and brown rice in combination, mainly for um, for pancakes, um, for a gluten-free variety. I like to try to balance the gluten, you know, if possible. If you're obviously off gluten, those are great choices. And I have a great um, recipe on my site um, for soaked pancakes or waffles. And so that mainly millet is used for that. Um, when I was making bread more regularly, I would add, also add millet to that. Brown rice, um, great side dish. Um, you can add it to casseroles or anything like that. Lots of good nutrition there. Better choice than white, obviously. And kamut. Uh, I use that also mainly for as a supplement with wheat to so kind of give a little more variety in my grain. Um, but I also use it with wheat to, um, it, it makes it a lot easier to roll out certain things like pizza crust or tortillas. Kamut is a great thing to, to add um, half and half or a little of to, to help make them more pliable. And then over here I got bland lentils, black beans, and rolled oats. And I like to buy all these things in, in, in bulk from Azure Standard or Bob's Red Mill or, you know, the bulk section at your natural food store. Um, great way to save money. But I choose brown, brown lentils for lentil soup and various frugal, more frugal meals. Those are great to use there. Black beans, um, mainly to make my own chili and pinto beans for burritos and things like that so or just to add black beans to a dish um, great great nut nutrition there they're probably the most nutritious of, of beans so I, I use those um, right now I don't even buy like kidney um, and mainly other beans because that just you know simplifies it for me and rolled oats for our soaked oatmeal mainly we eat a lot of that over here and frugal good yummy nutritious breakfast and um, and then as a filler, you know, for various things like granola and and stuff like that. So that's my first unit my there. Second little pantry for all my baked goods, and this is above my my counter, so it makes it easy for access. I keep glass jars here. You'll see because um, they're great for uniformity. Um, I I took got rid of plastic jars a couple of years ago so that I could just have nice clean things and don't have to be afraid of anything leaching into my food. So that's why I choose all glass. I've got my nuts and seeds on this side, some baked goods in the middle here. Um, actually this is me, like, yeah, baked goods over here. So uh, raw raw almonds that I've soaked and dehydrated, flax seeds, mmm, just delicious. To add, add, I add these practically to everything from granola to protein bars to breads and baked goods to my um, homemade uh, blender waffles and pancakes and just a good good um, added for the omegas, omega threes and such. And so then I got my natural baking soda and baking powder. This is aluminum free Rumford brand, which is preferred. And then you've got real salt here, good for um, every because it's got it's got this is the Redmond real salt which I like to use because it's got so many good nutrients and minerals um, preserving all the quality minerals that are back here cocoa powder yum for my 
Brownies, of course, mainly, and other baked goods, cinnamon, and arrowroot powder here. And I buy these again, um, most of those in bulk quantities, that I, um, and then I use just these jars to so store the easier access um, for baking. And then some extracts here, and my slices over here, making it very easy to access all of them. And you'll see I've got an assortment. But mainly I keep just to the basic ones that I know I use every day. Parsley, garlic, oregano, dill, um, ginger, curry, paprika, etc. So that's my second, second unit for baked goods. Up top I store the extras. My little grinder for seeds and nuts and stuff like that. My third storage unit is over here, which is a turntable which I include various, this stores all my um, oils, grains, and some of my sweeteners. And so I'm just going to step you through some of the, the main ones I use. For oil, I really just stick to coconut oil and olive oil. And butter, um, of course, on occasion as well. Coconut oil serves me perfectly well for everything baked. Baked goods, I'll place any required um, oil with coconut oil because I can melt it if necessary, um, or using it in its solid state if I'm doing like a pastry, like a biscuit sort of style, good. And then olive oil I will use for some dressing mainly, um, and then some some cooking, but I try not to heat that because you don't want, that's one of the oils that you do not want to heat, whereas the coconut oil you can heat um, and still protect its qualities. So olive oil mainly for cooking, uh, excuse me, for um, eating raw with um, dressing. And I, I can pan it with uh, the organic uh, balsamic vinegar here from Napa Valley, which is, has so much flavor. Those two together is, serves as our main salad dressing um, just because they're both so delicious. So those are two oils. I really don't buy any other oils because I've, I've found I can do everything with those two oils. Um, over here I've got my grains. I keep, as I showed before, kamut. And then this is sprouted wheat and this is just regular whole wheat and those three are the ones I'm primarily using now because I like the hot sprouted wheat if I don't if I forget to soak I can just pull that out or if I need additional flour like I'm rolling out the pizza crust and I need additional flour I might roll that you know might grind some of that up so that it's already dealt with the phytates and don't need to worry about that and then I've got my spelt excuse me this is not spelt that says spelt on the top but this is just whole wheat <laughs> hard red um or hard white winter wheat, which I'll just use for any of my soaking and baking. And kumud I like to use in combination with these grains. Um, it works especially well with pizza crust combination because it helps, it just, it rolls out so much better with a little kumud rather than just all whole wheat. Kumud and whole wheat or, and you know, for, for tortillas as well, that works really nicely. For, for beans, I really just use um, navy and black beans. Black beans are one of the most nutritious ones, and so I stick with those for all my general cooking. I um, like chili and, uh, you know, if I wanted to refry some beans or something like that. And then navy beans I use just for um, those sweet and sour beans or, yeah, basically that's all that those are used for. Um, nuts and seeds I keep. Um, might be cons, almonds for snacky stuff. Make candied almond, uh, make candied pecans and... The almonds I soak and dry for, you know, um, protein bars and and uh, granola and stuff like that. And I got my raisins, preferably organic, because these are highly high pesticides there. And then for 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 um, pasta, I choose brown rice pasta. I got my brown rice spaghetti pasta. These are available at Trader Joe's, which makes it really nice and frugal and economical, and great because they're gluten free and you don't have to worry so much about soaking there. So, and then sweeteners easy. I just use honey, sucanut, occasional stevia, and real maple syrup. What do I use these for? Um, generally, I use honey for, I, I do use it for a good amount of baking, but mainly for just like sweetening our oatmeal, smoothies if I need to, um, things like that. Rapadura and our sucanut here, I mainly use for all my baking because it's the whole cane sugar. Let me see if I can get you to see. I can't take the lid off here. <laughs> but anyway, I use, I use these smaller jars for um, 
storage up here in this unit so it's easily accessible. And then I use this large gallon size jar in the lower pantry down there and restock. And if I need a bigger quantity, that would go out in the garage. So those are the sweeteners. I use stevia on occasion for more just for the smoothies or sweetening, plain yogurt, you know, if we make some yogurt or something like that. And then real makeable syrup I'll use for, you know, mainly for pancakes, waffles, um, French toast and things like that. And occasionally for some homemade um, ice cream. Um, cornmeal, mainly for cornbread. Buttermilk powder, um, really, I used to use this more, but um, mainly I just use it now to make homemade ranch. I'll add a little buttermilk powder to that. I do keep some white flour on hand. Um, <laughs> this comes and goes in my house, but it's usually for if I'm making a special uh, dessert for a birthday party or something like that, I like to keep some of that on hand. Or if I need a little extra you know, to prevent stickiness when rolling out a baked good or something like that. I'll use that. And then there's some, that's the bulk <laughs> cocoa powder there. And this is coconut flakes, which I'll use in my coconut brownies or um, uh, some granola, various things like that. And I just keep some other general oils on hand. Not very much on seasonings that are stored down there. So that's kind of just a, a quick glimpse of all the things that are included in my kitchen. And I'll take you back to the garage. You can see what I in our garage with our nice Costco storage unit. And this helps store our bulk grains. So down here you'll see my five gallon plastic um, food grade, food safe plastic containers here that I store my bulk grains. Um, one contains um, spelt. I do use, I'm not using so much anymore. Um, but, and then this is oats. And then the other one over there is wheat. And then that one over there is actually empty. Sometimes I buy um, whole wheat pastry. Not buying that so much anymore. Um, and then I got coconut oil here. Buy five gallons of that from Mountain Reserves. Split it with friends and stuff like that. So we save a ton of money on that organic extra virgin cold pressed uh, coconut oil. The best option there. And then up here I got cans, some canned goods. Not an extreme amount. Really just buy these in bulk um, on occasion. I've got wild salmon canned for um, my, you know, various food items there. Um, some clams, chowder, and then um, base or clams mainly, and then, which I get from Seaside, local local um, seafood. And then coconut milk, which I use for my curries and coconut ice cream and stuff like that. Just yummy, yummy and nutritious. You will know that I love coconut for all the nutritional value and just delicious. So anyway, that's that's kind of a look at what we store in the garage. And welcome to our hallway closet where I keep our canned goods. So it's a more balanced temperature. Got our pickles mainly right now since we haven't done a lot of canning yet and some, some tomato sauce left over from last year. We'll be doing some more of that and adding some applesauce here shortly to fill up those jars in our small hallway closet which is mainly used for vacuum excess chairs in our cleaning bucket but um you know we try to keep keep these clean and maintained um so that yeah, that's a look at that aspect of our pantry so anyway that is a quick view of our pantry and the staples that we keep on hand for all of our cooking right <laughs> yeah and so i hope that was helpful for you to just kind of see what i use on a daily basis and if you have any questions feel free to add it to the comments or um, send me an email, and I'll be happy to help you out as much as I can. I'm not an expert, but I've learned a little bit over the last few years that we've tried to make our home more filled with real food ingredients. Thanks for joining me. Have a wonderful day.